Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. It's Shala from PSI Love You. Thank you so much for joining me today. We are hopping along with Scrap and Stamp for their watercolor wishes. And I am thinking outside the paint pan, if you will, today. I decided to look around my craft room to see what I could use uh, for watercolors that wouldn't necessarily be watercolors. So what I found was some uh, Distress Oxide re -inkers. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some of those into the cups there along with this dish soap and I'm going to blow them around with this straw. So I'm giving these a really really good shape and I'm going to start off putting five drops. It wasn't enough so I'm going to put five more. So I'll start off putting ten drops into each cup of the re -inkers. So I had the orange, uh, the carved pumpkin there. I'm doing ten of the aged mahogany and ten of the forest moths. And then I'm going to add a squirt of dish soap into each one. Now I just have this bottle of water that I keep refilling on my craft desk. I'll add just a little bit here. Um, I'll use my straw. This is Canson watercolor paper that I'm using. And I'm just going to blow bubbles into that mixture there. And I'm using the bubbles to hopefully put some of that pigment on the watercolor paper. Now when I start out here, it is really, really light. So that was the uh, carved pumpkin. I'm going to hit it with my heat tool just to dry it up here to see if it intensifies at all. Still really light. So I go to the forest moss, blowing bubbles again. This is so much fun. This was actually a technique that I used with tempera paints when I was an educational assistant. So I thought it would be just kind of fun to try with this. Now you can see that the pigment isn't very dark on these at all, but I'm gonna continue with the process to see uh, how each one turns out. It's hard to see, but it is leaving some really cool texture, some bubble imprints on that watercolor paper. So I'll hit it with my heat tool again. So I'm not really wild about these results. It's really, really light, but I think it'll be a cool technique. So I am going to add 10 more drops and we'll see how that turns out. I'll mix it around, blow some bubbles, and again, just laying that paper on top of those bubbles, waiting for it to pop. So that was a little bit better of a result for me. So I'm gonna continue on with this process. And then I decided I would scoop some of those bubbles on top of that paper and pop them with the heat gun. I realized that's just moving them around. So I brought in my Tim Holtz craft pick here to pop the bubbles. And that result is much better. I love the way that it's leaving those little circles, almost like little honeycombs. Look at that, I think that is so cool. So I'm gonna continue on with the process, adding more of that Distress Oxide re into the water and soap mixture, blow some bubbles, and then scooping the bubbles on top of that watercolor paper. That just really helps to um, intensify the look of, that, of the pigment there that we're using. So that's, I'm getting a much better result now. I really like this. So again, adding some more of that re -inker. You can add as much as you want to get the intensity of the color that you like. So blow some more bubbles, scoop that onto the watercolor paper with my straw. This is so much fun. And the kids can actually join you with this if you have some kids at home that like to craft with you. So I'll pop those with the craft pick and then move it around a bit with my heat gun and I think that's looking much better I think that will give me the results I want I added a little bit more to the forest moss because it still was a bit late for me and so I'm going to actually just pop these bubbles and then I'll actually just set that aside and see what happens when they pop on their own look at that I think that's so cool so I'm going to move on. I'm going to do that technique, but this time I'm going to blow some bubbles and I'm going to scoop a little bit of that um, pigment water down and then put the bubbles on top. And that really helps the bubbles just to kind of grab a hold of that pigment and they can kind of pull on the paper a little bit better and get that desired texture that I'm looking for. I am blowing my straw out on the side each time just to get rid of any of the uh, color that might remain in the straw. And I'm just using some paper towel like you would with any watercolor just to sop up any drips that you don't like. My paper is kind of bowing a little bit, but that's okay. 
it doesn't bother me. And this one I'm just adding a lot more uh, colors and bubbles to it. And now I've actually, you can't really see it there, but I actually got some of the liquid inside the straw and then dropped it with the straw onto the paper. Again, just really playing around and experimenting with, with what I can do here with this kind of technique. I encourage you to look around your house and see what else you can do. Maybe you have sponges or I've seen it done with string or yarn as well. So just play around with this technique with whatever you can find that might work for watercolors. And we're just creating some really cool, fun backgrounds. And I think the more bubbles that you put on, the better. I think it'll be a better result. Now I'm just getting a little messy and kind of splashing it around now. And I just love how, how the bubbles kind of join. And there is a little bit of muddiness in there, but that's okay. That doesn't really bother me. I think it'll... In the end, once I uh, maybe stamp on it or use it for my background, I won't notice it at all. All right, I'm moving on. I have some of this Lawn Fawn Shimmer cardstock, and I have this Wild Honey Distress Oxide, and I'm just smushing it down onto my Tim Holtz uh, glass mat here. I sprayed it with some water. I'm using a watercolor flat brush just to move that uh, pigment or that ink watercolor that I've created uh, just around, I'm doing like a light wash on top of this cardstock, this white Lawn Fawn Shimmer cardstock. And I'm hoping it's going to still shimmer through this uh, ink, this pigment, and give me a nice result. I'm going to just heat that with my heat gun here just to dry it up a bit. And look at that. Look, it's still got that beautiful, beautiful shine. I'll clean up my craft mat and I want to show you here. This is the same cardstock, but I just used it with an ink blending tool. Uh, the picket fence there and it still has a bit of shine but it was much uh, more concentrated of a color it, and this one is more of a wash and I like the way that the wash one worked better but you can do either whatever look you're going for so this is the card I actually made uh, with the panel so this is one of them and I'm using the Tim Holtz beautiful flowers I just cut them out I stamped them onto one of the backgrounds fussy cut them out and then adhere them to some black cardstock. I used a white gel pen just to make some faux stitch lines and look at that shine on that cardstock that we did that wash on. Isn't that beautiful? And those flowers, that's the background of those flowers or the color on those flowers, that's just from what I used of the backgrounds. And this one I'm using the VersaClaire black nocturne ink there. Uh, this is a great uh, detailed ink for like fine details this stamp here this is the Concord 9th City Stacks stamp set I just love this and I'm going to white heat emboss with it and that ink it just it does a great job with really delicate fine detailed stamps I highly recommend it so I'm just like I said using some clear embossing powder and I'm going to heat set that here and this is my favorite part when we're embossing is just watching that embossing powder melt. I find it really relaxing. I don't know why. And look at that. It's just beautiful. And now what we're going to do is I will... This is actually on watercolor cardstock. Again, this is that Canson watercolor paper. And I'm just cleaning off my stamp here. I try to remember to do that as soon as I'm done stamping so they don't get too mucky. And I'm bringing back in those three cups of water, or of the pigment, the Distress Oxide re in the soap. I'll tape it down to this bamboo board that I have just so my paper doesn't curl up because I saw that that was happening with uh, just putting the bubbles on. So I'll use my Thermo Web Purple Tape to do this. And I'll end up probably trimming this panel down so it won't bother me that there's a white line but I'm gonna try and make it straight just in case I do decide to keep it. Alright once I get that taped down I will bring back in those cups of Distress Oxide Reinkers water and I'm using just a pipette here just to drop some of that pigment onto where I kind of want it to be. Again I'm trying to be really loose. I, I end up being 
I don't know, really rigid and structured in my watercolor. And watercolor is supposed to be loose and flowy and you're supposed to just kind of let it go and let it do its thing. And I have a hard time giving up control as you can see because I'm trying to place specifically where I want this pigment to go. And that's why I like the bubbles. Um, I had to let go. I, I was forced to let go. So I just kind of uh, put down some of that pigment with that pipette and I've sprayed it with just a, a spray bottle that I have and now you can see I'm just kind of moving it around with a, a paintbrush that I have there and again trying not to be too particular in where it goes I'm, I'm trying to let the watercolor do its thing like we're supposed to and I like how it's turning out so far again I'm just dropping in some more with that little pipette there Kind of moving it around. Now I started off with dry watercolor paper there and then I dropped the pigment on and then I sprayed it with the water bottle so uh, it does have some moisture on it, not a ton, but when you drop it down onto that wet, wet paper you'll see that the, um, the pigment will kind of blossom out because it is wet. Again, just moving that pigment around with my paintbrush, trying not to be too particular. And it kind of looks like a hot mess right now, I'm not going to lie, I was a little bit worried, but wait till you see the end result. I love, love how it turned out. And that uh, carved pumpkin, oh my goodness, I am so in love with this orange color. I'm not really a big orange lover, but this something about this color I just really like. And I really liked it next to that orange mahogany. You're sorry, aged mahogany, not orange mahogany. And look at that. I think this is really coming together nicely. Kind of giving a, a feeling of almost a sunset. So I'm just using some paper towel and dabbing up some of those petals that I don't want. Again, just like you would do with your regular watercolors. I'm going to heat set this. Now when you do hit this with the heat gun, uh, that embossing powder may kind of reactivate so just be careful that you don't stick your fingers in it you got to let it cool off a bit otherwise um, you could uh, smush around your embossing all right that's almost dry here look at that i think that looks so cool it's nice and subtle it's not too overpowering and so this is how i finished this card off i backed it on some white cardstock and then onto some of this yellow cardstock here. I'll link everything in the blog for you guys if you want to know the materials I used. I did stamp it with that in my imaginary neighborhood you live right next door and then I stamped Miss You Inside. So this here is a Stampendous stamp that I have and I did the same thing with a Nocturne ink and heat embossed with that clear embossing powder. And this is a daisy one, but I want it to look more like sunflowers. So I forgot that this paper really curls when you add water. And so I sprayed it with water and it started to curl. So now I need to tape it back down to my bamboo board here with that thermo web tape. And I am spraying it again. I'm just using these reinkers. I brought in squeeze lemonade this time. And I'm using the reinkers just straight this time. So shaking them up really well and just dropping in that reinker onto that wet watercolor paper. Just kind of where I want that pigment to be. And now I'm going to use that forest moss. Or sorry, this is the aged mahogany. Again, it's kind of blooming out. It's not moving as much as I would like, so I kind of lift the board here and move it back and forth. And I don't like how much I have, so I'm gonna blot some of that up. And when you emboss with that clear embossing powder, it does kind of help to keep some of that watercolor or pigment in where it needs to be. You do want to be careful, again, that you're not necessarily working exactly next to another area because they will kind of bleed into each other, just like regular uh, watercolors might. But if that doesn't bother you, then, then you're fine. And you can see here how that forest moss just kind of bloomed out when I dropped it onto that wet cardstock, or that, uh, sorry, watercolor paper. I just think that is so cool. I'm bringing in my paintbrush again just to move some of that Distress uh, Reinker, that Oxide Reinker around just to get it moving because it didn't move as much as I thought it would. 
And this one turns out, um, in the end, it's a little bit dark, but that's okay. It still, it still turns out to be a really nice card. So again, just kind of moving, dropping in some of that pigment, moving that pigment around with that brush that I have. I would probably recommend using maybe a aqua brush, one of those brushes that you can fill with water. I have one, I couldn't find it at that exact moment, so I'm just using this uh, paintbrush that I have handy. I'm working on those centers. Now, the only thing that I did find with this technique, use, just dropping that a pigment on, is it took a long time for uh, the areas that were really heavy in pigment to dry. Like I left it overnight and it was still the next day, it was still a bit sticky and wet. So I had to dab it off with paper towel and then hit it with my heat tool again. So just keep that in mind. I mean. There's nothing wrong with that. It's just if you're trying to do a quick card, this that technique isn't necessarily something quick. You gotta let it have time to dry. So again, I'm just going in and moving that pigment around. I just I'm dipping it into that glass that I had the forest moss in with a soap. And you can see how it turned out here. I just backed it onto some chocolate brown cardstock, stamped thinking of you with a white heat embossing powder there and wrap some twine around. And that was just a nice quick card. Now I'm starting this again with Canson watercolor paper, my pipette, and I am just dropping drops of pigment onto the watercolor paper. Nothing, no rhyme or reason, just kind of dropping them here and there and seeing what kind of background I can get. I'll drop all three colors on. This again is that soap mixture. And then we'll see what happens. I think I end up by bringing my spray bottle and give it a couple squirts. Or I'm gonna heat set it a bit. The reason why I'm heat setting this is I want those little dots of, of pigment to kind of stay where they are. I want them to dry a little bit into the watercolor paper and then I will bring in my water bottle here and give it a spray and then move it around. But it doesn't bother me that they're bleeding into each other again. I'm just making a really wild background on this one. Just seeing what happens with the pigment and how it moves around. So I wanted it to sit just a little bit. Soaking up some of those petals that are happening on the edges. Again, I'm trying to give up control of making it do exactly what I want it to do. So I'll hit it again with that heat tool. Kind of drying some of that pigment on and then moving it around with the air. And this one turns out actually really cool. Again, it looks like a hot mess, but just wait. Just wait till you see the card that I make with it. Sopping up some of those petals. Now this is a bit of a process. Thanks for sticking with me. But I'll let that, I'm gonna get, put in a few more drops just to make that color a little bit deeper. Again, just play around and have fun and kind of let loose. And I like these colors. It's, you know, we're back to school now and fall's upon us. And I think this is just a, a fun way to bring in these fall colors. So again, I'm just trying to have that pigment kind of soak into that paper a little bit before I spray it with the water. I 
and that's pretty good. I'm going to move it around a little bit. It's amazing how much the paper towel can soak up. This background is almost done, so thanks for sticking with me on that. I, I just wanted to have some intense little kind of color spots there. There, and then I'm going to dab it up, and then I'll set that one aside to dry. And then look at this. This is the background, uh, the card that I came up with it. That is that uh, forest and deer background stat from Hero Arts. It's a nice big bold print. It's one of those red rubber stamps look at the close-up on that that heat embossing is just beautiful that's just with black nocturne ink and the clear embossing powder and i just think that's gorgeous so here is the uh, one card that i made just piping on some of those colors i love how those colors blended together you know i was i had a little bit of control with that i've got that i miss you inside and i think that turned out so cool i think that's a great watercolor look and then we have look at this this is that last card that last background we made I think this is a perfect birthday card for a guy or a girl look at that the shine on that embossing powder is just beautiful and again uh, it's just so textured and I think it looks really cool with that watercolor background that we created there again it looked like it wasn't going to be anything but once you get your stamp on top of that it's going to look amazing this is that uh, one that was a little bit dark. You know, it, it doesn't look too bad here. Now that's had some time to dry. It looks like kind of some shadows on the bottom. And then I've got that uh, twine here. And I think that one turned out really nice as well. And then I can just write anything on the inside. I left it blank. And then this is that first card we made. Again, those beautiful florals from Stampers Anonymous, Tim Holtz there. I gotta zoom out so you can see the full effect of it. This is going to be a business envelope size, so that's really cool. And then we had that wash in the background that we used, so kind of zoom in a little bit here. Those sentiments, um, I think those are the tiny sentiments from Simon Says Stamp, but I will link to everything that I've used here on my blog, so make sure you go ahead and check that out. As well, remember to hop along with everybody else who's participating. Look at that. I just used a gel pen just to do those little stitch lines. I think that is so much fun. This was really challenging for me, but I think in the end, I created some really cool cards, stepping out of my comfort zone, trying to find something else to watercolor with other than watercolors. Thanks so much for joining me today, guys. Remember to hop along, leave your comments in all the blogs, and have yourself a wonderful fall day. Take care.